for do you I guess disagree with the thesis we laid out at the start of this conversation that this year the existential threats seem so much more well they're more numerous and they it feels much more organized um, both from you know a, a, an outside group perspective and from within the elections infrastructure there are actors who want to see uh, a bad count that want to disenfranchise voters that don't want a free and fair election. Do you think that we're in a more fraught time in 2022 than we were in 2020 in terms of the actors and the tools they're using to undermine democracy? Well, I think President Biden spoke to this very clearly last night, where he said that democracy is under assault and that it is up to all of us uh, to be able to, to to do something about it. Now, certainly, you know, he's been talking about this uh, for a very long time. In fact, this was a big part of um, launching his campaign to begin with, that we were an inflection point as a country, that this was a battle for the soul of the nation. Uh, and obviously, we saw many of these elements in 2020, but it really does feel like the tip of the iceberg. At the same time, I think that we as a country are more prepared because people like President Biden are speaking about this, because um, the federal government is working closely with state and local law enforcement and election officials to make sure people are ready uh, for anything that can happen, that they're very vigilant. I will say, and I think it's very important to say, that we have been briefed by law enforcement. There are no specific credible threats at this time. Um, obviously, we'll continue to stay focused on that. The the president was, is obviously focused on that. He wants to make sure um, that everyone has the resources they have, Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, to make sure that the law is upheld and people are able to execute their vote uh, in a democracy. But it's, it's a fragile democracy, and the strength of it, as the president has said, is in the people and their voice and in their participation. Can you talk to me a little bit about that strategy? You talk about the federal government working with state and local officials. What does that look like? What, what can you tell us about what you're preparing for? and how much of it is informed by the strategy you employed in 2020. So, you know, of course, um, I'm speaking from an official standpoint at this point in, in the, the campaign in 2020, that was a little bit more campaign tactics. But what I can tell you, you know, again, there are no credible specific threats at this time, but the president wants to make sure everyone's ready. So there's a few things that I would um, point you to. What, what does that actually look like? Well, um, last week there was a joint intelligence bulletin that went out um, from Department of Homeland Security, FBI, and the Department of Justice to local uh, election officials to share and alert um, the types of threats that people could potentially see in this complex threat environment and to make sure that they're ready uh, to, to be looking out for the right things. Um, I know that Department of Justice and the FBI have for months been training thousands of these election workers to make sure that they're prepared and they know what to look for and what to understand. Uh, and at the same time, Department of Homeland Security has had voluntary uh, uh, security assessments for election facilities so that uh, they can uh, work with them as well. So there's a lot of readiness here, certainly based on experiences that, um, you know, we are we are all looking at and, and at the same time, um, making sure that we're in partnership and communication and we're just staying vigilant. But again, the president is extremely confident, has said this to the American people believes as deeply as he did in 2020. And the American people's votes are going to be cast and they're going to be counted. Jen, let me just ask you one more question. You talked at the outset of this conversation about patience, right? That was the sort of operative word in the, the shadow of Election Day in 2020. And I remember those briefings. You guys were out there saying, just be patient. We know what we, this is what's happening here. This is what's happening here. We know when the vote is counted, we are confident we will be the, the victors here. There are going to be a lot of people that do not have a lot of patience after Election Day this year. And in many ways, it feels more fraught. The pump is primed for a much more anxious, potentially violent situation. How does the White House communicate to a rest of American public, no matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican, that patience is what is called for in this moment where impatience seems to be the driver? Well, look, I think there's two parts to this. First of all, you know, the president has been clear that there is no place for violence or intimidation or harassment uh, in our political discourse and in our, our democracy. And when you see that, we need to call that out. And he's going to continue to say that. At the same time, 
it is important to make sure that we remember that there are millions and millions of people that will cast their ballots this year, uh, hopefully, and it looks like on track more than uh, recent midterm elections. And in that case, it is important to remember that it is better to make sure we have the opportunity to count every single uh, vote and that that's his expectation. I will add, and, and to what you said at the top, most of these election workers, they're volunteers. They're people like you and I who believe in this country, who give of their time, who work, who are in extraordinary circumstances. We certainly have heard that uh, through the January 6th committee and what we saw in many of the states in 2020. And so these are people in your communities, in your neighborhoods, doing this work because this is what they believe in and their democracy and their commitment to this country. Uh, and because of them, the unsung heroes of all of this, uh, we are going to have a, a, an election that Every vote will be counted. Uh, we're confident of that, and we're going to continue to give our support there across the country. It ain't over till it's over. Jen O'Malley, <laughs> Dillon.